while we were discussing about the uh, two dimensional model and a more complicated and realistic model of dialysis process, continuous dialysis process. And uh, what we have discussed that the removal of toxic material, the rate of removal of toxic material would be obtained if you, if you, if you compare the depletion of concentration from the feed site to the at any location in terms of cup mixing concentration. Why is cup mixing concentration? Because it should be the area averaged because that is the cup mixing concentration is the only measurable quantity. Now, we what we already had earlier, we already by solving the equation of motion and uh, species balance equation, uh, we coupled them and we got the concentration profile in terms of x and y. And once you get the uh, averaging in the y direction, that concentration profile will give you the cup mixing concentration profile. And we have looked into the solution, the solution of cup mixing concentration profile uh, gives by this expression. The first term comes from the x varying part, the second term comes from the series solution of the y varying part. Now, the lambda m, the eigenvalues of this problem will be obtained from the roots of this characteristic equation that will be obtained from the uh, boundary condition at y star equal to 1. Now, let us compute some of the values of a n m, this a 0 m is equal to 1. If you really look into the series solution, these are the coefficients that will come out a 1 m will be equal to 0, a 2 m is equal to minus lambda square by 2, a 3 m is equal to 0, a 4 m will be lambda m square 2 plus lambda m square divided by 24, a 5 m is equal to 0. Similarly, so that means uh, it comes from the series solution and use of the boundary condition, all the odd coefficients will turn out to be 0 and the even coefficient will be having some values. Okay. Similarly, you will be getting a 7 m will be equal to 0 and things like that and the capital A is given as n is equal to 0 to infinity a n m divided by n plus 1 into n plus 3 n is equal to 0 to infinity p is equal to 0 to n a p m a n minus p times m divided by n plus 1 into n plus 3. Now, I am doing all these, do not try to memorize any of these equations, do not try to uh, you know uh, go into mathematical complications, I am just writing these things for the sake of completeness. Okay. Now, I will just go through it and look into the application of these equations. Okay. Now, this equation can be simplified. Okay, the threatening form of this equation do not get threatened by looking into it, just uh, they will be simply simplified if you look into the exponential term. Now, all the solution if you look into the solution of uh, cup mixing concentration, the cup mixing concentration the exponential terms becomes very important. Because if you look into the values of this lambda, the eigenvalues, these eigenvalues will be in, in, in this, the first eigenvalue will be around 0.3 or 0.4, second eigenvalue will be around 3.3 or 3.4, they will be typically in the order of arithmetic progression of 3. Okay. Next will be let us say 6, next will be fourth will be around 9, okay, like that, but it will be also multiplied with the square of that. So, as you go on increasing the number of terms of the summation series, these terms, this exponential or minus becomes extremely small. So, if you go to the second term, third term like that the contribution of this will be so small when it is multiplied with the other quantities, those will be negligibly small. So, you can very well work with the first eigenvalue itself. Okay. So, the first eigenvalue that is because the exponential terms decay rapidly. and we can we can very well work with the first eigenvalue itself. The first eigenvalue will be lambda 1 square is equal to p star divided by 2 by 3 plus 5 by 12 p star. Okay. So, you can very well get with the first eigenvalue and consider the first term of the summation series and if you do that then the whole equation becomes very simplified. 
you need not to bother about the second term, third term onwards and lambda m square will be replaced by the lambda 1 square and lambda 1 square expression is given by this. So, now you are in a position to plot log of c m c c m star versus uh, x star. Now, if you really do, you will be getting an expression something like this log of c c m star versus p star x star because that becomes uh, non dimensional this becomes p x over u 0 h and you will be getting the curves something like this. This p star equal to 0, this p star is equal to 0.1, this p star is equal to 1. So, what is p star? p star is nothing but p times h divided by diffusivity of the solute in the bulk. So, we know that diffusivity of the solute in the bulk, we know the channel half height and p, p is a constant which is a characteristic for membrane solute system. So, we know the p star. So, various other membranes, so p star becomes an operating condition uh, the selection of the membrane and selection of the solute. Same membranes and different solutes, the value of p star will be different. Now, one can get the, so if, if you would like to re, uh, remove let us say 90 percent uh, of phenol in the feed site or 90 percent of urea from the feed site, you know the feed concentration, you know the amount that is entering into the feed. If the removal rate is known to you 90 percent let us say, you can calculate what is the CCM star, what is the cup mixing concentration. If you know the cup mixing concentration, you can consult this plot and let us say p star is equal to 0 0.1, let us say CCM star log of CCM star may be this then you can go there and can get the value of p star x star. In this quantity p is known to you, u 0 is known to you, h is known to you, you can find out what is the value of x or what is the length of the dialyzer. Okay. So, therefore, if your removal rate is specified that I would like to remove 99 percent of urea let us say from the feed. Okay. So, uh, that is you know uh, the removal rate if you remember it was uh, 2 u 0 h w multiplied by c 0 by minus c c m divided by 2 u 0 h w divided by c naught right. So, that is the percentage efficiency sort of thing. So, the whole thing becomes it will be cancelled out. So, it becomes 1 minus c c m star right. So, you can so, so, this will be specified, m will be specified. So, you can find out the value of what is c c m star. You can go to this plot and you know what is the characteristic value of this parameter p star because you are selecting the membrane and the solute and therefore, you can go to the appropriate plot and can get the value of p x star and from the p x star you can get the value of x or the length that is required of the dialyzer. Okay. That way the two dimensional analysis of a of a of a of a continuous dialyzer can be done and it will be more accurate than the uh, one dimensional analysis that we have talked earlier. Now, in order to get a uh, closer view to your system, now we will be looking into a simplistic approach. So, uh, and this simplistic approach is basically as far as the mathematics of the analysis is concerned. simplistic approach of two dimensional model. Okay. So, here we will consider that instead of having a parabolic velocity profile, the feed will be going for by a plug flow, the feed velocity, the, um, the velocity profile of the feed feed is plug flow. That means, the it is it is called uniform velocity profile. If you look into the you know velocity field for three different cases, this is for a laminar one, this is for a turbulent one, turbulent velocity profile. this is for a uniform velocity for pro profile. For the laminar profile, it is parabolic in nature with the uh, maximum at the middle of the channel. In the turbulent one, again 
there will be the, the turbulent core will be prevailing. The turbulent core is basically the velocity almost constant. The turbulent core will be prevailing in the 95 percent, about 95 percent of the full channel length, and then you will be having only small portions where the viscous sublayer and the transitional region will lie. And in the uniform uh, plug flow, the velocity is considered to be uniform throughout the whole channel. That means, if you increase the velocity of the feed, the transition will be from the laminar to the turbulent and from the turbulent to the uniform velocity profile. Okay. The what is the uh, you know uh, simplicity as far as the mathematics is concerned, u is a strong function of y here, u is a weak function of y here because 95 percent of the channel length the velocity will be almost equal to turbulent core and u is independent of y here. So, this is a strong variation of y, this is a weak variation of y and this is independent of y. So, u is equal to u naught and the whole analysis becomes simplified, you need not to do a series solution to compute the y varying part as we have discussed in the earlier sub problem. Okay. So, the, the assumptions those are required for this problem to solve this problem. One is it is a plug flow, second is plug flow means only the as far as the velocity field is concerned. Second is it is a steady state of course. Third one is dialyzate is extremely dilute. Dialyzate is extremely dilute that means, the uh, solute that is coming to the dialyzate side in instantaneously it will be washed away. So, there is no concentration in the dialyzate side. So, therefore, the solute mass balance equation in the feed side becomes u 0 del c del x is equal to d del square c del y square. Okay. This is the same equation as we have done in the earlier case, but in this case u is equal to u naught instead of the parabolic velocity profile and we define the you know uh, the non dimensional quantities as sister is equal to c by c naught y star is equal to y by h, x star is equal to x by l if we know the length of the dialyzer. Okay. So, or, or you can you could have defined the x star that whatever we have defined in the earlier case as well. So, what I have done I have solved this problem using x by uh, x by l it does not matter really. Okay. So, if you substitute all these quantities there this becomes u naught del c star over L del x star is equal to d over h square del c del c star over del square c star over del y star square. So, we will be getting u 0 h square by d L is equal to a multiplied by del c star del x star is equal to del square c star del y star square. And this is nothing but the operating conditions and this can be written as a is equal to u 0 h square by d l and this is nothing but and, and h can be replaced by equivalent diameter divided by 4 as we have done earlier. So, it will become 1 by 16 Reynolds Smith d by l. Okay. So, a becomes really a non dimensional parameter and it is defined as 1 by 16 Reynolds Smith d by l. So, therefore, the non dimensional let us uh, let us write down the non dimensional equation and non dimensional boundary conditions. Non dimensional equation becomes a del c star del x star is equal to del square c star del y star square okay. and the boundary conditions let us write down to, the, to for this governing equation and let us make them non dimensional as well. If you do that at 
y star is equal to 0, you had del c star del y star. So, initially you had del c del y will be equal to 0, so it is del c star del y star will be equal to 0. At y is equal to h, you will be having d del c del y plus p c will be equal to 0. So, that means at y star is equal to 1, you have del c star del y star plus P E M plus plus P star okay, C star will be equal to 0, where P star becomes P H over D, the non dimensional solute permeability through the membrane. And of course, at x star x is equal to 0, you had C is equal to C naught. So, x star is equal to 0, C star is equal to 1. So, this is one boundary condition at y star is equal to 0, this is another boundary condition at y star is equal to 0, this is another boundary condition, this is another, this is basically nothing but the initial condition at x star is equal to 0. Now, in this system there is no terms like 1 minus y star square and things will come. So, this is a straightforward case of parabolic partial differential equation, parabolic and linear P d and linear and homogeneous boundary conditions in y star and a non homogeneous initial condition. Non homogeneous initial condition that is at x star is equal to 0, c star is equal to no 1. So, obviously, this problem will be definitely a candidate for having a separation of variable type of solution and we are going to do a complete solution by using separation of variable. Okay. Solution we assume c star is equal to x x star y y star. Okay. So, that means, we can completely dissociate the x varying part and y varying part and the overall uh, uh, solution will be constituted by the product of x varying part and y varying part, uh, if, you, if, you, if you can evaluate them separately. Now, you just substitute this in your governing equation, your governing equation was a del c star del x star is equal to del square c star del y star square let us put c star is equal to x into y. So, what you will be getting is as d c star sorry d x d x d x star is equal to x d square y d y star square. Just divide both side by x y, what you will be getting is a by x d x d x star is equal to 1 over y d square y d y star square. Now, the left hand side is completely a function of x, the right hand side is completely a function of y and they are equal and that means, this equality will be some constant. Okay. So, this constant can be 0, can be positive, can be negative. If it is 0 or positive, we can show that we will be landing up with a trivial solution which you are not looking for. So, for a non trivial solution, this constant must be negative and this constant will be minus lambda square. Okay. So, if you really do that, then the x varying, then we can solve the um, x varying part and y varying part. The solution of the x varying part part becomes a by x d x by d x star is equal to minus lambda square. So, x becomes uh, some constant exponential minus lambda square times x star and this constant lambda is called the eigenvalue of the problem. So, we write a lambda m and the corresponding solution as x m where lambda m indicates the mth eigenvalue.
and we really do not know what is the value of lambda m till now. So, we, we, uh, we have the complete solution of the x varying part in terms of Eigen value and the y varying part if you look into the governing equation and the boundary condition y varying part becomes uh, 1 over y d square y d y star square is equal to minus lambda m square we put substitute uh, uh, subscript m in, uh, in y as well because that corresponds to mth eigen value. So, this becomes d square y m d y star square plus lambda m square y m will be equal to 0. Okay. And we know the solution of this equation, the solution is constructed by the sine and cosine functions. Okay. And let us look into the boundary conditions. Okay, the solution of this equation is constituted by the sine and cosine functions and y m becomes uh, let us say some constant c 3 sin lambda m y star plus another constant c 4 cosine lambda m y star. Okay. And what are the boundary conditions? Boundary conditions will be the boundary conditions in the y direction of the original problem must be satisfied by the boundary condition of this y varying part. That means, at y star is equal to 0, your d y d y star will be equal to 0 and at y star is equal to 1 d y d y star plus p star y will be equal to 0. Let us put the subscript m to make all the definitions consistent. So, if you do that, let us put the first boundary condition at y star is equal to 0, d y m d y star will be equal to 0. Let us let us take the derivative of this d y m d y star will be nothing but c 3 lambda m cosine lambda m y star minus c 4 lambda m sin lambda m y star. Now, in order to impose this boundary condition, you have to evaluate this derivative at y star is equal to 0. So, if you do that d y m d y star becomes at y star equal to 0 means uh, sign varying part will be equal to 0. So, you will be having c 3 lambda m cosine la, uh, 0 will become 1. So, that will be equal to 0 and lambda m cannot be equal to 0 because if lambda m equal to 0 then whole thing boils down to a trivial solution. Therefore, in order to satisfy this boundary condition your c 3 must be equal to 0. Right? So, the your, if your c 3 is equal to 0 the whole solution of y varying part becomes y m is equal to some cosine variation. Right? So, y m is nothing but c 4 cosine lambda m y star. Okay. Now, let us use the other boundary condition at y star is equal to 1, you have d y m d y star plus p star y m will be equal to 0. That means, uh, let us let us uh, get d y m d y star means it is nothing but minus c 4 lambda m sin lambda m y star. Okay. So, if you put this boundary condition here, what you will be getting is minus c 4 lambda m sin lambda m. Okay. That is the that, that is this part evaluated at lamb, at y star is equal to 1 plus p star y m evaluated at y star is equal to 1. That means, this will be nothing but c 4 cosine lambda m will be equal to 0. Right. So, what do you get? Your, your, your uh, c 4 okay, c 4 multiplied by p star plus uh, minus lambda m tan lambda m will be equal to 0. I divide both sides by cosine lambda m. So, your now there are two probabilities. If c, I, either c 4 is equal to 0 
or whole term in the bracket will be equal to 0. If C4 is equal to 0, you will be getting Yn equal to 0. That means, you are going to get a trivial solution, but you are not looking for it. So, C4 cannot be equal to 0, that is ruled out. That means, what is equal to 0? You will be getting lambda m tan lambda m will be is equal to P star. Now, what is this equation? This equation called a, uh, a, a characteristic equation or it is also known as the transcendental equation and uh, depending on the value of P star, okay, if whether it is a 0 0.1 or 1 or 0 0.5 or whatever, you will be getting the solution of lambda m tan lambda m. Okay. So, you can use by, uh, by doing any iterative technique by like a Newton Raphson technique and if you really plot this equation, you will find that this will give you the infinite number of solution. So, this will be the first eigenvalue lambda 1, this will be the second eigenvalue lambda 2, lambda 3 lambda 4 likewise you will be getting infinite number of solutions. Now, how to the point is how to compute this the, the solutions or the roots of this equation which are nothing but the eigenvalues to the problem. In fact, that is a, that is a very interesting problem. Uh, I, I just uh, taught this thing in the last course, uh, but you can also do it by yourself. What you do? Uh, you depend so p star will be known to you okay let's say p star is equal to some value okay given that value you use a newton raphson technique with a guess value okay so guess a value of lambda m let's say 0 0.5 or 0 0.3 or 0 0.1 whatever okay now put in a newton raphson loop you will be getting the first converged value of lambda m that will be giving you the first value of I uh, first eigenvalue. Now, the, the typical characteristic of this equation is that the roots will be appearing in the arithmetic progression of around 3 or 4, it will be around 3. Okay. So, therefore, you put another loop over the Newton Raphson where the guess value, the second guess value will be let us say uh, previous one plus 3. Okay. So, and, and using that guess value, if you solve this equation by using Newton Raphson, you will be landing up with the second root. So, the number of times you are iterating the outer loop, you will be getting number of uh, number of eigenvalues. If, if you if you compute the outer loop, if you evaluate the outer loop four times, that means if you use the guess value four times with an arithmetic progression of three, you will be landing up with first four eigenvalues. Similarly, since it is in, in the computer is doing the work and you are not basically, you are just instructing it, you can instruct it to compute the first 10 values. So, you will it will compact, compute the first 10 eigenvalues and things like that. So, that is why, so, so eigenvalues are the roots of these transcendental equations. Okay. Let us stop for the mathematics and let us come back to the actual problem. Let us look what is the expression of the final solution. Final solution of concentration profile becomes C star x star y star is nothing but summation of C n when the run uh, C n cosine lambda n y star exponential minus lambda m square x star divided by a, let us say let us put it at m, so that everything becomes consistent, the index m runs from 1 to infinity. So, it is an infinite number of series, in, there are is infinite series with this form. Now, you have the initial condition, now the whole solution is now formulated except the constant c m that will be obtained from the non-zero initial condition that is the one condition still we are leaving to utilize. The initial condition becomes at x star is equal to 0, your c star is equal to 1. So, therefore, you will be getting 1 is equal to m is equal to 1 to infinity c m cosine lambda m 
y star. Okay. Now, uh, again I am not going into mathematical detail. In fact, from this equation, this equation can be solved and you can determine the value of C m if you utilize the orthogonal property of the cosine functions and sine functions. Cosine functions are orthogonal to each other. That means, integral of cosine, there is a cosine, cosine lambda m y star, cosine lambda n y star d y star will be equal to 0 from 0 to 1. Okay. This is known as the orthogonal property of the cosine function. That means, you multiply both side by cosine lambda n y star d y star and integrate across the domain of y star that is from 0 to 1. Okay. If you do that on the right hand side, if you open up this summation series, uh, this, this orthogonal property is valid for, for lambda for m not is equal to n. That means, I will get you my point. So, you are multiplying both side by cosine lambda n y star d y star and integrate across the domain of y star that is from 0 to 1 and then you open up this summation series on the right hand side. So, on the left hand side you will be having only one term that is 0 to 1 cosine lambda n y star d y star and the right hand side you will be having a summation series you open up the summation series. Now, for all the terms when m is not is equal to n this term will vanish only one term will survive when m is equal to n. So, from that you will be getting you can in, you can evaluate the value of this constant C m and this C m then becomes 0 to 1 cosine lambda m y star d y star 0 to 1 cosine square lambda m y star d y star. Why is cosine square? Because in that case n becomes equal to m only one term will survive. So, cosine lambda m and cosine lambda n. So, both becomes cos, cos square when m is equal to n all the other terms will vanish because of the orthogonal property of the cosine function. Now, if you really carry out this integration, uh, I am not, uh, I am just leaving the couple of steps to you. This becomes 2 sin lambda m divided by lambda m p star square plus lambda n square divided by p star square plus p star plus lambda n square. Okay lambda m. This is a straightforward integration, you can carry out this integration by yourself and you can check that the value of constant, uh, the constant uh, C m turns out to be this. If you and since lambda m are known, because lambda m are the roots of the characteristic equation that we are going to evaluate numerically. So, sin lambda m will, will be known, lambda m will be known p star is, an, is nothing but an operating condition depending on the characteristic of the membrane. So, you can evaluate the constant C m. Once you will be evaluating the constant C m, the full concentration profile is now known to you. It becomes a function of x star and y star m is equal to 1 to infinity C m cosine lambda m y star exponential minus lambda m square x star divided by a and a is the uh, thing that we already know it is uh, 1 by 16 Reynolds snit d by l. So, once you know the full concentration profile because all the quantities are not are now known to you, you can now in a position to evaluate the cup mixing concentration. That means, you are going to do a y averaging over this concentration profile and can get the cup mixing concentration. So, therefore, the cup mixing concentration becomes C C m star which will be a function of x star is nothing but u naught okay, that is constant in this case C x y multiplied by d y divided by u naught d y uh, 0 to h 0 to h this is, there is no star okay let's say this is in in dimensional form okay you, you, you can just divide by c naught everything becomes star okay so in fact u naught u naught will be cancelled out because it is a 
uh, uh, plot flow velocity, so it becomes constant. So the, you can you can really do that and find out the uh, cup mixing concentration and the cup mixing concentration as a function of x star it becomes ccm star it becomes uh, you know 0 to 1 c star x star y star d y star and uh, this is nothing but summation of cm exponential minus lambda m square x star over a integration 0 to 1 cosine lambda m y star and if you really evaluate this integral the whole expression of c c m star becomes summation of c m sin lambda m over lambda m exponential minus lambda m square x star over a. After carrying out this integration, you will be in a position to get the value of uh, cup mixing concentration. Okay. So, once you get the cup mixing concentration, then the rate of removal of pollutants will also be known at a function of x star. Okay. If you remember the definition that we have put for the rate of removal of pollutants, that is m is 2 u 0 h w times c 0 minus c c m. So, you can just divide by c naught and uh, this becomes 2 u 0 h w times c naught 1 minus c c m star and you can substitute the expression of c c m star as 2 u 0 h w c naught 1 minus is summation c m sin lambda m by lambda m exponential minus lambda m square x star divided by a. So, you will be in a position to get how the removal rate is varying as a function of x star and you can define a, um, a particular value of removal rate let us say 90 percent to 95 percent and you can estimate what is the value of x star you will be requiring to get that to, to, uh, to, to find out the length of the dialyzer. Okay. Now, the mass transfer coefficient becomes very important and if you uh, for the design of this and if you look into the uh, uh, let, us, let us try to establish the uh, expression of mass transfer coefficient. Since this problem it has been simplified to almost an analytical solution the expression of mass transfer coefficient will also become very, very, very simple. And one more thing is that if you in order to get in order to evaluate this summation series as we have discussed earlier the values of lambda m becomes very high uh, as you go for the second eigen value, third eigen value or second term, third term of the series square becomes further higher. So, these exponential terms becomes lower and lower. So, you can compute the first term or first couple of terms that is good enough. You need not to go to compute let us say first 10 terms or first 20 terms. First two terms will be good enough because the exponential term becomes smaller and smaller they will be contributing less and less towards the summation series as you number of term, as the number of terms are getting increased. Okay. Now, in the next we evaluate the mass transfer coefficient And we start with the definition k is nothing but c m minus c c m in this case the bulk concentration is replaced by the cup mixing concentration minus d del c del y at y star is equal at, at y is equal to h because our coordinate system now is at the middle. So, in terms uh, in terms of you just make it non dimensional y we define y, y, y star you define as y by h. So, this becomes k. C m star minus C C m star will be nothing but minus d y h del C star del y star at y star is equal to 
1. Okay. So, share root number is, is defined as k h over d for this particular problem and in the non dimensional quantity we will be del c star del y star at y star is equal to 1 divided by c m star minus c c m star. Okay. So, that is the definition of share root number and, and you can uh, put the values and uh, if you if you write down the first for the first eigen value then see what you get okay del c star let us let us first evaluate del c star del y star del c star del y star will be nothing but summation of cm minus lambda m sin lambda m y star exponential minus lambda m square x star over a and del c star del y star evaluated at y star is equal to 1 becomes summation of c m lambda m with a with a, neg with a negative sign sin lambda m okay, exponential minus lambda m square x star divided by a. Okay. So, that is del c star del y star evaluated at y star is equal to 1. So, that, that will come to the numerator. Okay. Now, let us write down, uh, let, let us just uh, compute this expression or this you know uh, the share root number for the first eigen value. Okay. We will we'll be getting a neat solution for n is equal to 1 that means, for first eigen value. We will be getting minus del c star del y star at y star is equal to 1 as c 1 lambda 1 sin lambda 1 exponential minus lambda 1 square x star over a c c m star that is the cup mixing concentration it becomes c 1 sin lambda 1 divided by lambda 1 exponential minus lambda 1 square x star by a and what is c m star x star that is at when it is at y star is equal to 1 right. So, c m star becomes c 1 exponential minus lambda 1 square x star over a cosine lambda m okay, when y star equal to 1. Okay. Now, c m star minus c c m star this becomes c 1 exponential minus lambda 1 square x star over a times cosine lambda m minus sin lambda m over lambda m. Okay. Now, we put all the values in the definition of share root number, then we will be landing up with the uh, share root number when m is equal to 1, okay. for m is equal to 1 that is the first eigen value. So, if you do that, the expression of share root number becomes c 1 lambda 1 sin lambda 1 exponential minus lambda 1 square x star over a divided by c 1 exponential minus lambda 1 square x star over a times cosine lambda m lambda cosine lambda 1 minus sin lambda 1 divided by lambda 1. Now, c 1 c 1 will be cancelled out and this exponential term will also be cancelling out. So, the share, the expression of share root number becomes lambda 1 sin lambda 1 divided by cosine lambda 1 minus sin lambda 1 divided by lambda 1. So, this is the this is the expression of share root number you will be obtaining and if you remember the lambda 1 will be a function of p star. 
if you remember it was lambda m tan lambda m is equal to p star okay, i think that is the expression so the first eigen value so it will be depending on the value of p star so depending on the value of p star the first eigen value from this expression that you are going to get take using that one can get the value of sherwood number computing the first eigen value you can compute so let's say first two or three terms and you can get the overall expression of sherwood number and what is the mass transfer coefficient that is that will be appearing in this particular system i have given this example for the purpose that uh, although this is this is an unrealistic case because most of the dialysis operations are undertaken uh, you know under laminar flow conditions okay but th this is not only a turbulent this is a very high turbulence so that the turbulent velocity profile can be considered as a uniform velocity profile or plug flow uh, i have given this example simply because if you really look into the actual case where the where the laminar profile is existing the mathematics becomes very complicated and uh, in order to show you that under the certain simplification how the mathematics comes out so now probably with this example it will be very clear to you the various mathematical intricacies involved in this calculations so you can go back and now really confidently solve the actual problem that whatever we have done in the uh, the previous example okay so so that that uh, covers the whole dialysis operation so let us uh, summarize whatever we have done till now the first we defined the uh, def uh, defined the dialysis process was defined and here we said that it is a process which is driven by the concentration gradient only now we talked about two dialysis processes one is the batch another is the counter current steady state so our aim is to design or to you to to evolve the uh, to get the uh, design equations for this counter current steady state dialyzer because that is the most common and most important and most useful one so what we did we identified the whatever the resistances that will be occurring for during your calculation so we first we take recourse to a one dimensional calculation in this one dimensional calculation we assume that concentration is a function of x only and concentration is not a function of y that means we are assuming that same concentration is prevailing over the cross section of the channel second one is the velocity is also considered to be uniform and we are we basically computed several parameters in terms of uh, uh, cross sectional average velocity now we identified various resistances or mass transfer coefficient mass transfer coefficient is, is nothing but the inverse of the film resistance so we we identified the uh, film mass transfer coefficient in the feed side we identified the mass transfer coefficient in the dialyzed side and the membrane resistance l over dim okay now these three resistances are basically put in series and you will be getting the overall mass transfer coefficient or overall resistance then we carried out an analysis this is exactly like counter current heat transfer uh, problem okay and we ultimately obtained a design equation which is nothing but a log delta c lmtd sort of thing log mean temperature log mean uh, concentration difference okay delta c lmtd sort of thing so it is instead of log mean temperature difference it becomes log mean concentration difference so by looking into those equation and if you carefully uh, you know uh, calculate these three parameters one will be able to obtain or design the one uh, the, the dialyzer but among these three quantities it will be easier to calculate the kf and kd because the sherwood number correlations are available to you so one can use the operating conditions in the feed side and in the dialyzed side one can use the geometries of the feed chamber and the dialyzed chamber can easily find out the mass transfer coefficient in the feed side as well as in the dialyzed side on the other hand 
although the it is not a problem, it is not a much of a problem uh, with nowadays the analysis uh, analytical facility that we are having in the laboratories. It is very easy to calculate the or estimate the thickness of the membrane, but it will be extremely difficult to calculate the solute constant diffusivity within the membrane phase. So, in that case what we can do, we can take recourse to the batch dialyzer. and carry out a simple experiment in the batch dialysis cell and keep on monitoring the concentration of the solute in the dialyzed site. Okay. By, by a suitable plot of this uh, dialyzed concentration as a function of time, one can estimate the value of D i m more accurately. In that we have, we have elaborated one another method to estimate the value of D i m, but that contains some parameters which are difficult to estimate. Then we so, our one dimensional counter current batch dialyzer was, uh, was over, then we identified the you know shortcoming of that and we went for a uh, two dimensional models or more accurate models. Okay. In two dimensional model, we, we assume that uh, first we assume that uh, velocity is laminar and there exist a velocity profile in the in the channel and which is nothing but a parabolic velocity profile. So, using this we obtain the concentration as a function of x and y, we define the uh, percentage efficiency or the amount of solute that has been you know removed and based on that we, we define the cup mixing concentration and obtain how the removal efficiency is varying as a function of x star. By defining a particular removal efficiency let us say fixed at 90 percent or 95 percent will be will be in a position to calculate what will be the length of the dialyzer. Then in order to explain the mathematical intricacies involved in this process, we simplified this uh, step number 5 assuming a uniform velocity profile u naught and completely solve the problem uh, that is a classroom problem that can be solved using the analytical tools and uh, we have obtained the uh, the value of you know uh, the removal efficiency and the Sherwood number in this case. So, after uh, whoever will be doing these courses or the or this or these lectures on dialysis etcetera after doing this class I will be I am just expecting that each of you will be able to at least design a dialyzer given the conditions geometry and the uh, of the of, and the removal efficiency. Okay, either one dimensional case and you can uh, go for the two dimensional analysis and you can compare what is gaining, what is what accuracy you are gaining if you go for higher dimensional modeling or design equations. Okay. So, I will stop here in this class and the next class onwards I will be solving some of the example problems which will be very crucial as far your examination is concerned. So, most probably in the next week I will be getting couple of classes will be solving some example problems only. Okay. Thank you.